Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome to this month's Connect with Control M. My name is Michiel Tiller. I'm a TSA based in the Netherlands and supporting Control M. Today we'll be looking at how one can integrate Control M into a DevOps CI and CD lifecycle. Here's the agenda of today's session. We'll start with a quick overview of DevOps and CI CD. Then we'll describe the scenario that we will be walking through in our demo followed by the actual demo showing how Control M Automation API can be used to provide DevOps CI CD integration. I'll share some useful resources related to Control M Automation API and finally we'll have the Q&A session. So what are DevOps and CI CD? DevOps is a software development practice that combines software development, dev, and IT operations ops to shorten the system's development lifecycle. CI-CD are separate practices, meaning continuous integration and continuous delivery. DevOps and CI-CD are often used together by agile software development teams to continually, continuously produce new application features in small iterations, covering both the development of the software and related deliverables. These practices are commonly aided by tools that highly automate version control, testing and deployment. Control M Automation API provides the jobs as code approach to enable development of Control M jobs during the software development lifecycle. And it provides tools to automat automatically build, test, transform, and deploy the code. In our demo, we'll use a scenario of a developer that needs to build a process that downloads a file from a business partner, transforms and verifies that file, and then uploads the result to another partner. In their project, the developer is responsible for writing both the Python programs that do the transform and verification, as well as the Control M job flow. They'll develop the jobs using JSON code. The project has already largely been developed, but a new feature needs to be added. For version control, in our demo environment, we're using Git. The central repository is being hosted on GitLab. We use Jenkins for the CI and CD build pipeline. In Git, the currently accepted version of the project is named the master branch. In this example, the master branch is currently at commit A. To begin development on a new feature, the developer creates a new branch named change file and can then modify and test code without affecting the master branch. He creates a commit B and later needs to fix a problem with that code, creating a commit C. When all is tested OK and the new feature works, they create a merge request so that work on the new feature will be reviewed and if, if it's accepted, it's merged back into the master branch. During that development workflow, Jenkins automatically picks up those commits the developer pushes to GitLab. When a development branch is pushed, the pipeline will automatically start a build and test of the new code. The build phase checks the validity of the job's JSON code and the test phase runs all tests that the developer defined to test the project in a test environment. In our case, that means it runs the jobs in a console M test environment and checks that they run as expected. Finally, when the master branch is merged, that creates a new commit. So a final build test is performed and then the code is deployed to, for example, a production or user acceptance test environment. So here we see our example project in GitLab, which is acting as the remote repository for our developer. It's quite similar to GitHub, which you may be familiar with. The folders and files belonging to the project are displayed here on the right. The scripts directory contains the Python programs that the developer wrote to handle the transformation and validation of the files. The tests directory contains those tests the scripts that are used for automated testing. And the CTM jobs directory contains the JSON files that defines the job flow and the connection profiles needed for the file transfer jobs. So let's have a look at the jobs JSON definition file. As you can see, the code to define the job is actually quite short. Here you can see uh, the JSON file is actually simple, quite a simple structure, and it defines sections between curly brackets. The first section here is the default section, which defines 
attributes that are will be common for all jobs that are defined afterwards. Then there's a folder which contains four jobs. And each job is actually quite short. It only has a few attributes. So only the most of, most attributes are optional, so you only need to specify the ones that are either mandatory or you actually want to change. So it keeps the code quite short. And finally, there is a Jenkins file in our repository, which tells Jenkins how to build, test, and deploy this project. For this demonstration, we've chosen to use shell script directly in the Jenkins file using curl commands. These call the Contlem Automation API to build and deploy the JSON and run the automated tests in a test Contlem environment. The login credentials for Automation API are kept in Jenkins itself and autom automatically provided to this script at runtime, so the developer doesn't need to know the cred credentials for any of the environments used in the build pipeline. So we can again see this is a, a JSON-like format with curly brackets defining each section. And there's a, a, a build stage, a test stage, and a deploy stage. And each stage defines what needs to be done in that stage. So for example, in the build phase, we log in to the Contralem Automation API and then performed a build and a, and a logout a log at the end. So this this step actually just verifies if the JSON code is syntactically correct. Uh, the test phase runs all the tests, and deploy actually uploads the jobs to a production or UAT environment. So let's pretend to be the developer. And make a change. So this is the local PC of the developer. So the GitLab uh, project is the remote repository. And here we've got the same project files on our local machine. And we can use the git command to see that currently the files we have locally are equal to the files that are on the GitLab. So our branch is completely up to date, it says. So the first thing we need to do is we create a new branch instead of masters to make our change. So now we change to a new branch, which means any file we now update isn't changed in the master branch, but in a separate branch. So anything we do doesn't affect the master branch, which is currently live. So let's open the jo job JSON again. And let's make the change that's needed. In this case, we were asked to change the input file. So make the change. Right. And save the file. And now we tell Git to commit that change. Oh, that's the wrong command. Let me just copy. The right one, yep. And we push this changed script up to GitLab. So now the changed file on our local machine is being pushed up to the GitLab. So if we bring up GitLab, we should see that a new branch has appeared here. Let me refresh the page. So there was the master branch, but we can also see there's now a change file branch. It's, it's just the one we just made. If we now go to Jenkins, we see there was the master branch here, uh, which was built. But if we update it now, we see the new branch has appeared. So Jenkins has automatically picked up that the new branch was uploaded, uh, pushed to GitLab, and it's been it started a build of this change. So we can see it's done a build, which was successful. So the JSON code uh, change didn't break anything in the JSON code, but the test has actually failed. And some of you 
might have noticed that I've deliberately made a mistake in the JSON code. So if we go back, there was a typo here, which obviously needed to be the same file name as the two other places where I changed it. So now the developer has fixed this uh, problem. And we're going to push that fix up to GitLab again. And we'll see that Jenkins should automatically pick up that change again. Yep. So it's again Jenkins is building the changed project and running the test again. So we can actually go and have a quick look at the test control M on which Jenkins is actually performing the test. Let's see. Right, so here we see the first set of jobs that were uh, created on the test environment by Jenkins to test this job flow. And it obviously failed in the, f in the second job because the file name was wrong. And now actually it's running the second fixed job flow. And we can see it, it completely worked OK. So if you go back to Jenkins, we'll see the build has completed successfully. So that's how uh, a build pipeline can be used to autom automatically start testing the code uh, that developers have written to create console M jobs automatically. So uh, now let's say we're happy with the change. So what we want to do is merge this change into the master branch. So we can create a merge request on GitLab. And let's put in a nice comment there and submit the merge request. So the developer submits a merge request. And normally, this would now go to an approver that needs to verify if if this can actually go live. And uh, uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'll be reviewing, reviewing my own work. So I'll click Merge, which updates the master branch with the fix we've just created. And we can should see that Jenkins now picks up that the master branch has changed and performs a build there. It doesn't perform a test because we've defined that we don't want to test uh, updates to the master branch because uh, that will go to uh, a UAT environment, which we don't want automatic tests to be, to be run on. So it's being deployed instead. So only the new code is just uploaded to that new co uh, other console environment. And that concludes this demo. So let me so brief recapture what we've seen during the demo. We looked at how ContraLAM jobs can be developed using JSON code. We saw how developers can create and maintain jobs as part of their software development workflow using tools like Git. We used ContraLAM Automation API to automatically build, test, and deploy those jobs from a continuous integration tool, in this case, Jenkins. The following sites provide additional resources with examples and videos related to Automation API. Our GitHub site provides example code together with explanations about what that code is doing. You'll also find the examples I used in today's demo there. The jobsascode.io site contains many videos and tutorials explaining the jobs as code approach. And finally, there's a link to the API documentation. Thank you for taking time to join this webinar.